Kia has an all new sedan coming, the K4. It's the replacement for the Forte. And if this is anywhere as affordable as the outgoing Forte, people are going to love this because it's a big upgrade. I'm Tom Volk with the Seattle International Auto Show at a studio just outside of Detroit, Michigan for a first look. I don't get to drive the K4 on this trip, but I think it's very important for you to know what's coming up so you can make a good buying decision, right? This here is the top trim GT Line Turbo. Regardless of the trim level, Kia says the K4 has the largest footprint in its class at just over 185 inches long and nearly 73 inches wide. That's around an inch longer and two inches wider than Honda Civic, so this is not a small vehicle. A lot of people complain that vehicles look the same these days. That's not the case with the K4. It uses a design language that Kia calls Opposites United. Styling is gonna polarize, especially when it comes to the C-pillar. If you remember the late great Stinger Fastback, there are elements that remind me of that. Up front, there's Kia's tiger nose face with headlights that look very much like the ones found on the far more expensive EV9. Same goes for the taillights. They have a very techy vibe. If you find the sedan design too avant-garde, the hatchback K4 is confirmed for the US. It's probably a year or so away. K4 gets two powertrains. The base engine is the two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, an upgraded version of what's now found in the Forte. It makes 147 horsepower and 132 pound feet of torque. The transmission is an intelligently variable transmission. New is a 1.6 liter turbocharged four. It makes 190 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. It's only in the top trim GT line turbo version. It shifts with an eight speed automatic transmission. There's no manual gearbox like Civic Si. GT line and GT line turbo models get a specific multi-link rear suspension. If you're an enthusiast, you'll want this setup. The interior is a substantial upgrade from the Forte. I have limited time with this car. I can't get to all the details, but Kia is very proud of the standard integrated digital instrumentation. None of the competitors have anything like this display. It's nearly 30 inches long. K4 has a few interesting cabin colorway choices, including slate green. So there are some chances being taken here. Materials? look quite good in this particular car. It is the top trim. There are even vented seats available. K4 is raising the bar in this segment. The user interface is dubbed Connected Car Navigation Cockpit. It has over-the-air update ability. I've used it in Sorento. It's excellent, nice and snappy. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard on all K4s. There are natural voice commands too. I'll get to those in my full review. Some models are available with digital key too. Samsung phones and iPhones can be used instead of a fob. It can now be left in your pocket and you can text access to family and friends, uh, you know, if you trust them. As far as the back seat goes, Kia says the K4 has best in class head and leg room. I believe it, I am five foot nine. I've got a decent amount of headroom. Uh, legroom is fairly decent. Um, there are lots of accoutrements back here, adjustable vents, power ports, a little slot. There are storage in the doors. There's a pocket on the passenger seat back. Overall, the carpool gang should find it pretty comfortable back here. Two adults will be perfectly fine. Three, maybe a little tight, but I'm guessing that third person doesn't want to pay for an Uber. K4 will get loads of standard ADAS technology like lane keeping assist and adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Optional is the excellent highway driving assist too, blind spot view monitor, and a class exclusive emergency evasive steering assist. K4 is a traditional sedan. It doesn't have the utility of a hatchback, but sedans tend to have a little bit more security. It's a little tougher to see in. Thieves don't know what's in the trunk. There's a solid amount of space back here, 14.6 cubic feet. 
That's essentially the same as a Honda Civic sedan. Seats split and fold, that's always handy. Uh, let's check to see if there's a spare tire. Yes, uh, not always a given these days, folks. If you're cross shopping, and you really should because cars are expensive, you'll be looking at Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, Nissan Sentra, Mazda 3, Subaru Impreza, and Volkswagen Jetta. When it becomes available in the fall of 2024, the K4 should be pretty affordable considering that they no longer have the Rio. Now, the Forte right now starts at around $21,000. Considering how advanced this is, I'm guessing there's got to be somewhat of a price increase, but it can't be too expensive. I'm going to guesstimate around $24,000 to $28,000. That's going to be the sweet spot. The turbocharged engine, I'm guessing closer to thirty. dollars But again, that's just a guess. Don't hold me to it. Hope you got something out of my first look at the Kia K4. Again, no chance to drive it, though I'm very interested in getting behind the wheel, especially the turbocharged engine. Thanks for watching. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.